Well, I think I first played in this church about 13 or 14 years ago when I was a music student in London. I played in a concert here with a group called the Endymion Ensemble. And every couple of three years since then, I've played as part of the Spitalfields Festival here with always um, incredibly positive results, not only in terms of the audience, but um, also in terms of my own feeling about the way that I've played in here and my own feelings about, the, about a sense of well-being, of musical well-being. Well, we're in Christchurch Spitalfields, which is one of the London churches built by the architect Nicholas Hawksmoor. Hawksmoor was a pupil of Christopher Wren, but of a very different temperament. And his grand scheme after the Great Fire of London, when the churches were going to be rebuilt, was to erect a pattern of churches across London and here at, at Spitalfields, which is probably his grandest church. It's amazingly grandiose for the actual area that it's built in, and you get the impression that it's meant a lot to a lot of people over those years. And I've always sensed that I'm playing to all those people. Hawksmoor studied antiquarian folios, had a collection of images which he would draw on from Egyptian architecture and the stranger outfields of Roman and Greek. He was interested in oddities and peculiarities. Very often, one will find churches that are built according to a musical scale. And the two perfect intervals are the perfect fifth and the perfect fourth. So the proportions of five and four mean something in terms of the construction of churches, as those very intervals do mean something in the construction of a musical octave. Hawksmoor, in particular, designed this church on a module of five feet in length, with measurements being multiples and divisions of five. So the music is based on the interval of the perfect fifth and its subdivisions. The parallels between architecture and music um, have not only been known for centuries, they go back to Greek times for our civilization, but they're also known in ancient India and ancient China. And it is basically to do with beauty. It's something that I find constantly interesting, the idea of a building, something so weighty and so, and so powerful as a building, being based on the musical scale. The whole universe is based on harmonic principles and we find beauty in the hearing of those principles and we see beauty when they're set up in architecture and we appreciate them in that way. various ways to, to read the pattern of Hawksmoor's churches. Did he, for example, align them with each other and build up a, a pentacle or a series of shapes and triangulations across London, or was this accidental? Uh, authors like Peter Ackroyd have suggested that there was an actual occult pattern built into the design of the Hawksmoor churches. The way I would rather see them, perhaps, is that they honoured patterns of energy that, that existed in London from the earliest times. There is a theory that Hawksmoor built in a profane reference as well as building a sacred building. In the music that I've composed, I've also um, built in the profane reference by basing it basically on the ecclesiastical mode B natural, which has within it the tritone, which was known as the devil's interval. So it's, it's a musical metaphor for a theory that already exists about this church. I 
suppose that the discovery of the bodies in the crypt downstairs was a reminder to us that this has been one of the most exciting and vibrant places in which to, to work and live in the, in the whole of London. Uh, the people that f were found down there were mostly Huguenots, but it, it reminds us also that the Jewish population were here in the early part of the 20th century, and now the Bengali and Bangladeshi population remind us that it's, um, it's an area of immense vitality. Um, it's also been the area where uh, the poorest people have had to live. people who came to worship at this church at Spitalfields will have come from a Georgian townhouse. And that Georgian townhouse will have been built on rooms which were deliberately portioned on the musical fifth and the musical fourth because um, Palladio, the Renaissance architect, put this in his book which spread right through Europe and had, as far as I'm concerned, the best possible influence on um, English domestic architecture. One of the key stories or fables of immigration is the story of David Rudinsky. There's a synagogue in Princelet Street of which David Rudinsky in his last years was a caretaker. He looked after the synagogue after it had been closed down. And one day in the 1960s, Rudinsky apparently completely disappeared. The room was a Marie Celeste room in which all his goods, clothes, books were still there and remained there for years with the room locked. And what's interesting about Rudinsky is that in his early days he was perceived to be almost an idiot and yet after a number of years he re-emerged as fluent in Middle Eastern languages and making translations out of the Sumerian. He had actually vanished and disappeared and this is something that does tend to happen in this area. Spitalfields is an area of disappearances. Each civilization takes a tradition which is timeless and makes it appropriate to the time it's in. And a modern composer has to do the same thing. He has to take timeless values and make, awaken the, the contemporary mind to things which are more valuable than, than a personal existence, something which is going to be permanently true. The ancient sources of the scales, the perfect intervals, are things that have a resonance, a natural resonance, and that type of early music means so much to me that I'm incorporating it into my music in order to turn out uh, music that is living and contemporary but it has, it has its sources in the most ancient types of music.